Hi, welcome to the COVID-19 Lake Norman and North Mecklenburg briefing call. Today is Wednesday, May 13th. My name is John Bradford. I'm your briefing call moderator. We are on our eighth week of doing these calls, update calls for North Mecklenburg three days a week. I'm a small business owner, two companies right here in North Mecklenburg, about 40 employees between the two of them. And I'm also a former member of the North Carolina House of Representatives. Uh, the real purpose of these calls is just to bring together healthcare experts, government officials, business leaders, to provide regular COVID-19 briefings to educate and support the North Mech region during the outbreak. Just as we're, uh, you know, we're on phase one right now, so lots of new businesses are getting uh, opened again, and there is some guidance for cleaning and disinfecting for public spaces, workplaces, businesses, schools, and homes. You can find this cheat sheet on the CDC website. I have used it for my own companies. Uh, here's an example right on your screen. This is a diagram of my office for pet screening, and you can see we have closed off some offices and cubicles to spread people out. Uh, we have assigned offices. So this is making our plan, sharing with our employees, and then working your plan. And then, of course, we have hand sanitizers, disinfectants around the office. So this is kind of what you should be thinking about if you're a business owner or, or running any other uh, open uh, facilities. In the U.S., we're at 1.3 million cases, 80,000 deaths. Uh, that's 18,000 new cases uh, from yesterday and 1,000 new deaths from yesterday. Uh, you can see a heat map here. Uh, of the whole country. North Carolina is, you know, about middle of the pack. Uh, rumor controls, rumors, you know, there's always rumors, and any anytime there's a time of crisis, uh, there are no new rumors to share with you on FEMA, but this has been a great resource to check rumor. So I check this daily. Uh, the point here is don't be scammed. If you hear a rumor or you're not sure, please verify. That's just the best thing you can be doing so you don't get scammed. Uh, we're still under a state of emergency here in North Carolina. Uh, th these numbers are right off uh, just the D uh, Department of Health and Human Services website a few minutes ago. We're at 597 deaths. Uh, that's up from Monday from 550 deaths. Hospitalizations is at 521. It was 464 on Monday, so we've had a little bit of a jump there. And we're still holding at 99 counties out of 100 counties. There's still one a county where there's not been a positive case reported yet. So we'll see if that flips to 100 of 100, but right now we're at 99. Uh, you can see the trending, though, for positive tests as a percent of total tests is moving in the right direction, meaning it's coming down. Uh, that's on the that's the chart to the left. And our hospitalizations, you can also see that dotted line is is starting to move down. Even though there's a little bit of spike today versus yesterday, overall that line is still moving in the right direction. Those are the trends we want to continue to see. There was a new executive order issued yesterday, May 12th. It's Executive Order 139. And what it does is it provides additional regulatory flexibility to help ensure capacity in the state's healthcare system and improve its ability to effectively respond to the pandemic. It basically gives our Secretary of Department of Health and Human Services the ability to waive or modify regulations for accreditation for asbestos and lead testing professionals, accreditation of local health departments, and any regulations impacting child care and high-risk health care facilities. So this is a new executive order that was issued yesterday. We are in phase one, which means we are under a stay-at-home order. Uh, this should hopefully expire 5 p.m. on May 22nd, which is not this Friday, but next Friday, and then we're going to move into phase two. Uh, to me, phase two is really what I get excited about, because when we get to phase two, the stay-at-home order is going to be lifted, although there will be strong encouragement for the more vulnerable populations to stay at home. But what this means is there's going to be limited opening of restaurants and bars and other businesses like salons and things with reduced capacities for safety, but at least you know, we can actually go have a, a, a dinner somewhere or go get our hair cut. I don't know about you, but I need a haircut. Uh, so phase two is really uh, what excites me. And right now it's tentatively will start May 22nd, next Friday uh, at 5 p.m. And then after that, four to six weeks later, we'll go into phase three. And that's even uh, a different phase with even more reduced restrictions. Uh, but phase two is really the things that we should have our eye on right now. Uh, there are three W's I want you to remember. Wear a face covering. Wash your hands for 20 seconds or use hand sanitizer and wait six feet apart from other one to keep other folks to keep your social distance. If you want masks, cotton, case, uh, cotton face cover, uh, coverings, here you can order some. Shop.Andera Mills, $2 a mask. They sell adult and youth sizes. I've ordered them. You wash them in the washing machine. They're great. They're comfortable, in my opinion. Um, if you need some, you can order some from here. Mecklenburg County data, we're at 2,195 cases and 63 deaths. What's interesting about the death count is the death count has remained the same since Monday. 
It has been 63 deaths on reported Monday, yesterday, and, uh, and that's the latest data I have of this moment. It may change later today, but as of right now, we're still holding at 63 deaths. Almost all those deaths were in older adults older than 60 years. Three deaths were 50 to 59. So it is impacting the more senior age population. All deaths occurred among adults with underlying chronic illnesses, and more than half the deaths were connected to active outbreaks at long-term uh, long care facilities. So, you know, it really does show that there is a vulnerable part of our population that we need to protect, but then that means there's a large part of our population that hopefully can start getting to some normalcy with safety precautions. Now, every Wednesday, we're joined by the United States Small Business Administration Director of the State of North Carolina, Mr. Thomas A. Stith III. He's been great, and his office has been slammed, and we're very fortunate to have him. Um, uh, Director Stith, we'd love to hear an update from you on what's going on with the SBA. Uh, John, thank you again, and glad to participate today. Uh, we'll give uh, an update on our, our two major initiatives, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan and the Paycheck Protection Program. As we talked about last week, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan uh, opened its portal, that is direct uh, application to SBA for businesses within the agriculture industry. Uh, with the second round of funding, agriculture businesses uh, were given uh, the ability to apply for Economic Injury Disaster Loans. Uh, so the, the current uh, count for North Carolina for Economic Injury Disaster Loans uh, a little over 2,200 uh, loans have been approved in the state, uh, valued at over $312 million. Uh, nationally, over 78,000 loans so far approved for $11.5 billion. Uh, as, as we've discussed, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan also has the ability for the borrower to request an emergency advance. Here in North Carolina uh, to date, 77,000, a little over 77,000 advances have been approved, uh, and that's almost $264 million. And on the national level, uh, over 3 million uh, loans have, um, have been approved um, for the advance to about $9.8 billion. So the Economic Injury Disaster Loan is still processing applications. Uh, that has been uh, a process that has been slower than we all would have liked, but it is moving forward. Uh, just tremendous uh, response from the small business and nonprofit community uh, for the economic injury disaster loan and its accompanying advance. Uh, with the Paycheck Protection Program, uh, as we know, the Paycheck Protection Program is designed uh, to provide economic uh, financial support for uh, small businesses, nonprofits, faith-based organizations. Um, they are, they are uh, first and foremost, uh, uh, provide an incentive uh, component uh, that provides for a forgivable component of the loan. Uh, if proceeds are utilized during that first eight weeks afterwards uh, for 75% uh, at least for payroll, uh, and then 25% uh, could be utilized for utilities, rent, or lease payments. Uh, that portion of the expenses would become forgivable and reduce the amount of loan. Uh, so far here in North Carolina through uh, 5 p.m. on yesterday, uh, a little over 106,000 loans have been approved here in North Carolina, uh, and that uh, comes to a value of $12.7 billion. Uh, nationally, a little over uh, a little over two and a half million loans, uh, with the value of 191 billion dollars. Uh, as we have discussed as well, uh, from round one to round two, some of the lessons learned was to ensure that our smaller businesses and nonprofits uh, were participating and able to have access to capital. We're seeing some of the results of some of the uh, guidance changes. Uh, one, there was an allocation of $60 billion to smaller asset banks, um, and that provided uh, a vehicle for smaller businesses and nonprofits to participate. Uh, currently, the average loan is $73,000 compared to first round average loans of over $200,000. Uh, one key point that we want to point out is that there's still a funding available. Uh, as of this morning, uh, uh, over $100 billion is still available to small businesses and nonprofits. 
Uh, so we're encouraging, uh, in particular, those small business owners that may have not uh, uh, participated in the first round uh, to review the information concerning the Paycheck Protection Program uh, and if, if it will be benefit to the business or nonprofit uh, to approach your lender uh, and apply. Uh, it's available. Uh, it's, it's proven to be a very uh, significant resource. As I said, here in North Carolina, over 106,000 businesses and nonprofits have, are participating. Uh, we also, uh, on our North Carolina district website, have a listing of North Carolina lenders that are participating. Also, fintech companies, the non-bank lenders that are affiliated with SBA. We have a listing of those on our website. That's uh, sba.gov forward slash nc, sba.gov forward slash nc. Uh, so, um, John, uh, in conclusion, moving forward, obviously, with the idle uh, processing, uh, the Paycheck Protection Program still has funding, and we encourage businesses and nonprofits that uh, uh, feel that that meets their, their business needs and plan, and they're eligible uh, to certainly pursue a, a lender uh, and uh, because the funding is still available. Uh, that's the update for the day, and any, any follow-up questions you have, be glad to address. Uh, thank you. That was a very, uh, very powerful update, and it's great to hear that there's still funding available, uh, and especially I want to focus on nonprofits. I've had lots of questions from nonprofits, and I've explained to them that they could be eligible, so to please apply. So uh, that, that website, again, is sba.gov uh, slash nc. Uh, so folks can go check out look, banks uh, here in North Carolina for interest. So thank you, Director Stiff, for your leadership, for your office, and, of course, joining our calls every Wednesday. I always look forward to hearing your updates. So thank you. We, pre we appreciate you very much. Thank you, John. You're welcome. Now we're going to move to our uh, Dr. Jack, I like to call him. Dr. Jack Faircloth, he's a local doctor on the ground with Atrium Health. Uh, he's been uh, regular on our calls here. And uh, Dr. Jack, if you're on, we'd love to get an update from you, uh, my friend. Uh, yes, I'm on. Thanks, John, for moderating this and getting it together. It's uh, very informative for me as well, so I appreciate all the panelists. I just want to uh, re reiterate what you said, that Mecklenburg County numbers uh, continue to look good. We are, we do have 63 deaths total so far and 2,204 cases. Uh, but keep in mind when you hear those um, total number of cases that we have only tested 3% of our population. And that's because of the criteria for testing is still limited. Uh, you have to have flu-like illness. You have to be a, a high-risk person. Um, so not everyone that wants a test or not everyone that's, that has COVID-19 uh, has been tested. So we, that's that 2,200 number in Mecklenburg is a snapshot. Um, but drilling into that number, three in four people diagnosed with COVID-19 in Mecklenburg County continue to be in the age group of 20 to 59. So it looks like that the majority of cases are happening to those who have the ability to fight it off well. Uh, you mentioned that those over 60 with chronic illness were the ones likely to be hospitalized, and that is uh, still the case in Mecklenburg. If you look at state numbers, uh, it's easy to get these things confused. The state numbers are flat. So the new cases reported uh, today by the state are 470 uh, uh, for a new daily uh, uh, new diagnosis total for the day. Um, the average for the two weeks, um, for the seven days prior was 441. So those numbers are flat. Mecklenburg County numbers are declining. Hospital admissions in Mecklenburg County are down, um, and those numbers continue to trend down for the last two weeks. So our capacity for healthcare in both the office and the hospital in Mecklenburg are great. Um, we really need increased testing still. You, the U.S. Uh, is projected to need to test 4,000 patients per week in order to keep up with the virus and um, not just test, but contact, trace, and prevent spread. Um, and we're just shy of 2 million per week for the U.S. Mecklenburg County set a goal to increase its testing to 850 tests per day. In the next 30 days, they want to test 5% of our population. Currently in Mecklenburg County, we're only testing seven to 900 a day. So we have a long way to go in both the local, state, and national level for testing. Um, of note, the WHO set a benchmark of when uh, shelter in place or stay at home uh, was likely to be um, 
uh, safe to um, begin to lessen. And that benchmark is that we would have less than 10% of our testing uh, be positive for coronavirus. We continue to hit that number. In Mecklenburg County, we're holding at seven, almost 8%. So we, we look like we are appropriately starting to uh, loosen our stay-at-home orders. Um, we need to, we need a greatly enhanced ability to do contact tracing. We're not quite there yet. The health department locally has started to use school nurses, so we're thankful to them uh, to be utilized this way. Um, and as uh, I close, I just want to remind people that um, there are really five main places that 90% of coronavirus is being transmitted. So if you're in Mecklenburg County or anywhere in the U.S., uh, the five places that you're most likely to get it are home, work, public transportation, social gathering, and restaurants. So continue to be diligent. If you are one of those that are um, able to go to utilize those places um, or those uh, facilities, please continue to social distance. Um, we hope those facilities and, and those um, in charge of uh, cleaning will just uh, continue to be diligent. Uh, we do want to point out that the group size is vital. Uh, keep those groups less than 10 until we enter uh, the uh, later phases. Um, but outside of the home, social distancing and masks and gloves are very important, especially at, um, at work, uh, public transportation, social gatherings, and restaurants. Thanks uh, for the opportunity and uh, look forward to hearing the rest of the panelists. You bet. Thank you, Dr. Jack. Appreciate your update and appreciate you participating in uh, these briefing calls. And now we're going to move to Mecklenburg County Commissioner Pat Cotham. Uh, Commissioner, the uh, microphone's yours. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, John. Um, I'll be brief because uh, several of the things I was going to mention have already been mentioned. Um, but I, I did want to, you know, reiterate a, a few things and talk about the uh, uh, nursing home situation, um, but as of the information we re received since um, May 10th, they give us a summary, um, about one in six of the cases were hospitalized, and um, most of them are over 60 years old. But one thing that is interesting that of the reported cases uh, in the Hispanic community, 90% of them were under 60. I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, also, you know, we do, as has been mentioned, things are getting a little better. We're getting some declines in things. And two of the two and three of reported cases have met CDC criteria to be released from isolation. So, you know, we need to celebrate some of these numbers. Um, the uh, the uh, the nursing homes. I think it's important that we know the nursing homes that have had the outbreak. So it looks like uh, we're reporting 12 of them. So I would just like to briefly say their names. Uh, Huntersville Oaks, Pavilion Health Center, that's in South Charlotte, Autumn Care of Cornelius, The Social at Cotswold, Carrington Place Rehab and Living Center, that is in Matthews, The Laurels, that's in Pineville, Charlotte Square, which is also in South Charlotte, uh, Shelburne Place in Mint Hill, Mint Hill Senior Living, again, Mint Hill, Asbury Health and Rehab, that's in East, East Charlotte on Shamrock Drive, uh, Peak Resources, also in East Charlotte, and then the Pines at Davidson. So those are the ones where we've had um, outbreaks in, you know, congregate living there. Um, and uh, in the, one thing I was surprised that in the nursing homes, um, it seems like uh, that the deaths have been more non-Hispanic whites in the nursing homes. And that's just as more reflective of who is in the nursing home. Um, uh, so those are the, I think everything else has been covered by previous speakers, but I did think that was important to know um, about the nursing homes that were involved. But I think it's also good that we are seeing some things go down. And so we are on the right track and hopefully we can just keep 
keep that trend going. Uh, so that's a, my report from Mecklenburg County. Wonderful. Thank you, Commissioner, and thank you for participating always. Uh, now moving to the town of Cornelius. Uh, let's see, I think we hopefully have uh, Woody Wash and the mayor on. Woody, are you there? Yes, I am, John. Thank you very much. Yeah, of course. Uh, I don't have a lot to add as well. Uh, I think things are going pretty well in our town. You can tell that uh, business is coming back because our traffic is coming back. <laughs> Some of the things that are associated with uh, with businesses uh, showing up in a positive way to me. So uh, I continue to be concerned as I go in and out of uh, stores in our town that uh, uh, in, in many cases, folks are wearing the cloth mask and, and uh, certainly abiding by the social distancing. But uh, I think we could do a little bit better than that. And I hope folks will stay tuned to the need to do that as we move into the, to the future weeks so we can keep this uh, uh, progress going relating in, related to the reopening. So, uh, you know, hopefully all, all is good there. Uh, we're going to have a warm weekend on the lake. So let's hope that goes well. Uh, we'll be out and about uh, our uh, Lake Patrol and so forth, keeping an eye on things. So let's just hope that goes well and, and folks are, are very considerate when it when it comes to uh, being around each other. I, I did hear that uh, the Ada Jenkins Center is offering free cloth masks today here in North Mecklenburg. Don't know if uh, uh, the word is out, or how well it's out on that, but it's from 11.30 to two at Ada Jenkins and we're certainly encouraging our residents to take advantage of that. I think they're being provided by Novant. So thank you, Novant, assuming that's uh, the case. But anyway, that might be an opportunity for those, those that don't have the, the uh, cloth mask to pick up one, and then hopefully they will use it. So that's all I have today, John. Wonderful. Yeah, thanks, thanks for the update, Mayor. I much appreciate it. And, uh... Uh, let's see, moving to the town of uh, Huntersville, uh, Mayor John Anarella. Mayor, are you with us today? If so, we'd love to hear an update. You've been on all of our calls and just can't thank you enough for that, by the way. Yep, I'm here. Uh, you know, I think it's a sign that uh, we're slowly coming out of this because uh, our, our speakers don't have a lot more to add, which is good. We've ha we have clarity out there in terms of who can be open and so forth. So I'm happy about that. And like Mayor Washam, definitely looks like things are starting to pick up a little. I did want to point out on the county's website, mecnc.gov, there's a small business toolkit that was presented Monday to the business roundtable and basically gives you some uh, guidelines of things you can do to help during your openings. So uh, it could be just the signage or the rules or you know, sanitize uh, various uh, surfaces and, and so forth. And um, these, there's even on there uh, a list of companies that can help uh, eradicate uh, you know, the you know, dirt or grime or whatever else is uh, out there on, around your uh, business. So uh, I would go to that, mecnc.gov. Uh, in terms of any other news, I just uh, think we're uh, going to continue to be on a good track or hope to be on a good track. And hopefully on May 22nd, uh, we'll get into that second phase. So we'll keep our fingers crossed between now and then. That's all I have. I do have, I, I do have a serious question. Did you go to a dog room or get your hair cut? Or, I know we talked about that. No, I'm just glad that you can't see me right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I did make an you. I did make an appointment with a barber if they're open on May 23rd to be the first appointment. <laughs> You're going to have to push me out of the chair. So. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mayor, for being right. a part of these calls. Take Much care. appreciated, sir. You bet. Uh, now, uh, Town Commissioner, uh, Davidson Town Commissioner, uh, Matthew Fort. Uh, Commissioner, are you with us today? Commissioner Fort? Okay. He had said he'd be on the call today, but they had a board meeting last night and he was going to give us an update, but uh, perhaps he uh, got busy. So uh, let's uh, move on to, uh, oh, uh, let's talk about Rhonda Le uh, Cheek, excuse me, a CMS District 1 board member, Rhonda Cheek. Uh, she's not on the call today. She was on uh, the other day. Her only update was that uh, graduations are going to still be virtual. They are, uh, there are going to be some situations where you can drive up and get your diploma. Uh, so just, uh, you know, work with your, you know, respective schools and get those details. 
uh, but did want to uh, share that with everyone today. And now moving to our uh, uh, CEO of our local uh, Lake Norman Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Bill Russell. Uh, always enjoy. He has a lot of pep in his voice. So love to hear from you, Bill. What's going on at the chamber, sir? Bill, you there? Well, I know he's there. He's probably on mute, so we can't hear you, Bill. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I did have myself on mute. There you are. No worries. Yeah, you'll need to start over. <laughs> <laughs> you 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 know you know business is back when I've got more to say than Pat Gotham and the mayors. I, I've <laughs> got a point. lot to cover. Yeah, and I'm absolutely excited, John. We. We've had, I think I shared last week that uh, last week had been designated as Small Business Week, the 4th through the 11th Small Business Administration punted that down the, the road a little bit. But uh, we decided to go ahead and honor our small business community with a series of programs last week. But this week, we've really taken it up a notch, and we kicked off Monday with uh, a nationally renowned speaker, Chuck Gallagher, who had been at our Small Business Event of the Year two years ago. Uh, then last night, Kathy McAfee, Kathy talked about the fearless eater. Uh, Chuck actually talked about using video in your business presentations and IT. And we had over a thousand people watch that Facebook Live Monday night and then Tuesday night. I've never had a thousand viewers on a Facebook page. So it we have been absolutely blown away. Uh, tonight, we have an outstanding program. we got Steve Gilliland. He was our keynote speaker last year. Steve Gilliland is going to be talking about emerging from this pandemic. And he is a very, very funny guy, but a lot of great business lessons. Tonight, the, the one twist to it is last week was also Travel and Tourism Week. And again, travel and tourism is really taking it on the chin. We know what's going on with the restaurants. You can't even imagine the impact on hoteliers that are like 90% uh, vacancy, and it's just been tremendous impact on our hospitality industry. Well, tonight, we have Sally Ashworth, the executive director of Visit Lake Norman. You've cite cited some of the things that VLN has done over the course of the last two months. Uh, she's going to be on the line, as is Vinay Patel. Vinay Patel uh, is with Sri Hospitality. Benet has the courtyard in Huntersville, the, the residence inn uh, in Hunt, um, Huntersville as well. Joe Douglas is going to be representing the restaurant uh, industry as he talks about what he's been dealing with in terms of Cowboys uh, 131 Main that uh, has now opened back up. And again, um, they're going to be talking about the hospitality industry, but it's going to be a fantastic program. This is something that we partner with with WSIC. Uh, you, can, you can watch their WSIC Facebook Live. Uh, the Chamber will also be sharing it Facebook Live. Uh, WSIC, of course, is also 105.9 FM, so you can catch it there. So, again, going to be a tremendous program. Then tomorrow, we're going to have a special Zoom seminar, Retooling and Reinventing, How to Leverage Your Sales Opportunities Now That We're in This COVID-19 Pandemic, which we will probably be in for the foreseeable future. So, again, Selling, selling in this new time that we're facing. If you're a retail business, you don't want to you don't want to miss that. Then on Friday we have a Focus Friday, 8:30. Again, it's going to be Zoom, but all of this is going to be recorded, so you don't have to watch it Facebook Live or on Zoom. It's going to be handling the stress of the pandemic and the impact on our business owners, employees, and families. We have a representative from Atrium Healthcare. Uh, Carla Lever, Dr. Carl Lever, and Dr. Michael Clark with Novant Health. Uh, both of those are going to be on talking about uh, mental health, as well as Jeff Tart, who is our 2020 public policy chair. And again, um, this is going to be Zoom Live. You can, you can email the Chamber of Commerce, uh, or you can just look at the recordings when we send it back out. There's a number of things that the Chamber of Commerce has published. Uh, last week, I talked about our restart guide. This is a compendium from, from A to Z, from animal care uh, all the way through to, to, to zoos, A to Z. And it's going to be talking about the, the precautions and procedures you need to be taking as you open up your business. We also have a, uh, a, a other restart guides on there as well as procedures and things you can do. But go to LakeNormanChamber.org, LakeNormanChamber.org for these guides. We've um, John, we've also published some of our 
cleaning in, uh, businesses, those that not only do cleaning services, but provide cleaning product products. Because one of the things that our, our businesses, whether you're retail servicing customers or you, your office environment with, with employees and clients, you need to make sure that you are exercising uh, caution and you're, and you're having a safe environment. And you can, you can get these cleaning companies to come in and disinfect your environment and provide these products. As, as Woody said, we are very excited about opening back up the lake. Uh, we want to make sure that we're doing this so in a safe manner, uh, taking all the precautions that we need to take. But, and, and again, you can find many of these materials, the information on the seminars, procedures, the guides, all at LakeNormanChamber.org. Uh, again, I don't, I don't think there's a happier individual in Lake Norman than I am. Uh, I, it, it is such a relief to be able to see business owners and managers get back to do what they do best, and that's business. Um, you know, we, we're hearing people who want to continue to stay home. Uh, go ahead, please do that. But those who want to come out and support these businesses, we encourage that. If you want to stay home and you still want to support the businesses, do so online. You can, you can for restaurants, you can order online, take out delivery, have them bring it to you. Um, some of the retail businesses are doing that as well. But again, we thank everybody for just basically pushing through this. And and we knew there was going to be a light at the end of the tunnel. We've already seen phase one. And, and, and like you, John, I'm so looking forward to phase two opening up so that the other businesses can get back up and running, particularly uh, the Kilted Buffalo and the uh, Savvy Salon so I can get my hair cut. <laughs> uh, again, we're very, very excited about this. But thank you again, John, for everything that you're doing. The information uh, earlier today, you and I were talking. Jack Stevens, one of my employees that was basically, he was at home for six weeks. He was following your COVID-19 uh, responses every day to find out what was going on. And again, this has been such an important resource. So thank you for doing it. No, you bet. And that lineup you got coming out with Sally Ashworth from Visit Lake Norman, Joe Douglas for our listeners, Joe uh, 131 Maine, Cowboy, uh, even had some, I think, some involvement with tenders at one point. So a, a real, mm -hmm. some, great Absolutely. some great restaurants right here in town. So he's a great person. And then Vinay, I know him with all the hotels that he has. So a great, great lineup coming up. So uh, thank you, Bill, for what you do. You're uh, very appreciated, sir. Um, Absolutely. Just, um, you bet. Moving on here, just uh, Huntersville Chamber of Commerce. Actually, on the Huntersville Facebook page, they shared the Ada Jenkins free mask. That's where I saw it, so I shared it on Facebook as well. So here's uh, a resource uh, for you uh, if you're interested in uh, checking out the Huntersville Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and then just visit Lake Norman. Uh, you know, Sally Ashworth and Travis and Cindy, they have a, a small but a mighty staff, and they've been really doing some creative things. If you want a care package to send someone uh, that you're thinking of them or that you miss them, uh, they have some great Lake Norman paraphernalia. They will box it all up. They'll ship it for you, and you can include special messages. So go to visit at Lake Norman, and they have some really neat things. They even have uh, Zoom backgrounds of Lake Norman shots. So for all, the, for all of us on Zoom calls, you can uh, put your background to be one of their uh, photos that they have posted. They have some pretty neat ones. Uh, just thanking our, our, our panelists. As you can see, we've had an all-star lineup. We've had these folks the entire eight weeks we've been doing this. This could not have been possible without them. So I am uh, indebted to them for their help and their uh, wisdom on these calls. Our next Briefing will be Friday, May 15th. I always give our panelists a break on Fridays, but I still maintain uh, a briefing update because it's that important. Uh, emails, lkntogether at gmail.com. Uh, send those emails there. Uh, we have received several, lots, and we have answered questions and I've helped get resources for you. Uh, we are stronger together. Uh, take care of yourself. Take care of each other. This does conclude today's briefing call. Thank you for listening.